Hi, this is Brooke DeVard from Naked Beauty. Are you tired of feeling housebound? I sure am. Break free with the new Unbound Cordless Auto Curler from Con Air. It's a high-performance auto curler that's rechargeable and gives you up to 60 minutes of cord-free runtime. Just think of all of the incredible hair looks you can create in 60 minutes unbound away from your wall. Don't get tied down by cords. Love your look. Live unbound. Check it out at conair.com and search unbound. Welcome to Separate Separate Bathrooms. Bathrooms. And other handy marriage tips. We're going. We're rolling in 2020. Well, welcome back or welcome to Separate Bathrooms Season 3, Cameron Daddo. Feels like uh, feels like we haven't done this for a long time, Alison Daddo. <laughs> I feel a bit... Yeah, it's good. It's good to be back. A bit creaky. Yeah, a bit, uh, bit rusty maybe. Maybe. Yeah, knock the rust off. Very good to be chatting again here. We um, wanted to remind you we have a Facebook page, Separate Bathrooms. And we'd love you to hit us up with any questions, ideas, comments, queries, whatever you like. Hit us up on Instagram too. Al's at Ali Dado. I'm at Cameron Dado. And um, let's get rolling. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we're sitting here in our living room, as per usual, um, with the magical sound of rain falling. How glorious is that? And a sound that pretty much... Any Australian after the summer of 2019, 2020, going into 2020, is incredibly grateful to hear. It's like a, it's like a magic elixir, isn't it? We was out on yeah. the balcony just before in the rain and it just feels like, I, I don't remember ever feeling so grateful for rain or appreciative of cooler weather, actually. Totally. My lungs are so much happier. <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously we're talking about the, uh, the summer that's been... Um, and the fires, which have to go down on record as some of the most horrific Australia has ever seen, yeah. certainly the worst that I've ever experienced in terms of how long that they've gone for and how widespread they are. I mean, sometimes it felt like it was just right across the nation. Yeah, and we're not through it yet either. No, yeah. no. And I remember well the uh, the Black Saturday fires of t- uh, 2009, mm-hmm. and we watched them from afar. We were in LA when that was yeah. going on, and the lives lost and the impact was was massive um and uh to be in the same vicinity this time brought things to a whole new level of understanding for me yeah and it's been such an unusual summer the the feeling across australia sort of like this collective pall over the country and I've never wanted a summer to end more than this summer. You it's know, not, sad, isn't it? It is sad. Um, and for so many reasons, it's sad. And the fact that summer is normally this happy-go-lucky holiday, relaxing time. And instead, you know, most of us, I think, have been glued to TVs and watching this horror take place. Mm. And, um, you know, it's almost like you can't – there's a feeling of, like, how do I enjoy myself while others – have suffered so much and particularly our wildlife and especially our, our, you know, the communities that have suffered so much as well. So it's been a really tough summer. Mm. Yeah. I mean, even, and then gearing up for this year for me, it's felt like it's been slow. Uh, right. Because yeah. I feel like I, I actually don't feel that recharged. Mm. Normally summer is a time to, you know, to recharge, you hit the beach, relax, do all those have barbies and catch up with people there hasn't been much catching up with people this yeah summer. um and i don't feel that recharged is it too late though I mean, never too late to recharge i don't, I don't yeah. think so either uh and i think you know uh, we'll get into it later but there's there's things to do and and help out these folks that have been so um affected by the fires we'll get into that a bit later but to go and experience and have new new breaks um or have new adventures rather I do. I do want to say something, honey, about uh, about the mental health issue. Given that I don't feel recharged, I'm sure there is. There's a lot of people out there that that are in the same boat. Yeah, and, um, and that's just us watching. We haven't even experienced I know, I know, it. You know. I know. But we like you know when we went through the GFC, the global financial crisis, back when that happened. 
we went through it in America and people in Australia went through it as well to a different degree. We all went through it. We all went through some degree of it. And so to, to say that, you know, our experience is any less than anyone else's, it's, it's our experience. Obviously we didn't lose friends. We know friends that we have friends that lost property. Um, I don't know anyone that, that lost their life Mm. from it. Uh, however, you know, we all get affected in our own certain way. Um, there's been incredible levels of kindness from around the world. Obviously, money's been donated. Celebrities got involved, are involved. Sports people, sports uh, like the Australian Open just passed with the, the, the number of aces being hit. Yeah, that was cool. Hit. Just really cool ways that yeah. people are getting involved and donating. Um and obviously that's been necessary for a short-term fix, getting people back on their feet, businesses moving, et cetera. My, my concern is the emotional toll um, of the people that affected the mental health of those who witnessed things, lost family members, obviously, friends, saw their lives, belongings, their treasures just disappear with the fires. You can't unsee yeah. certain things. You can't unhear certain things and the stories from Malakuta down in Victoria of the animals yeah. you know, while people are on the beach, the animals perishing in the fires. My my hope is that there is a, a long tail to this giving, to this this uh, assistance that we're we're giving and I and I think the, the long tail has to be part of understanding and caring for people's mental mental health. Yeah. You know, their emotional fitness. And uh, we can get into some of that a bit later too. Yeah, because as as um, I think it was actually Celeste Barber's mother said, um, Australia is at war, and it. I'm sure that's exactly what the, the you know the PTSD the, from those fires are exactly what that feels like. That you know it's they've just as you said you know the what they have gone through, what they've seen, um, you know, the little kids that were there on holiday and had to be evacuated onto the beaches and, you know, so much. And yet, you know, that's the thing for me as a mom as well is how do we then, how do we keep moving? How do we not so much protect our kids from the news because it was all over the news, you couldn't avoid it, but how then do we help our children and help ourselves mm. in feeling like what do I do next how do I help and I and for me it's always action you know and even if it's in the smallest of ways mm. and you know we made sure we donated to a multiple um multiple charities across from Kangaroo Island to Victoria to New South Wales to bird life to make sure that you know we had our hand <laughs> as much as we could do in a different set of charities. And the thing that I found, I actually sent this out to Bodhi's um, class, is that I found a a knitting pattern for um, making, you know, pouches for, for injured wildlife, for, you know, little joeys and stuff. So Bodhi was right onto it because mm. she felt like then she could do something. She didn't have, you know, thousands of dollars to donate, but so – she immediately started knitting a pouch and felt really good. So, and then it's sort of like finding those good news stories in amongst all the horrific ones that are really buoying for, for us to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. We know that the, the act of fire has many properties to it. One, it can destroy, but it also galvanizes too. Um, that's where steel is forged in the fire and people coming together and assisting, uh, creating new things um, is uh, is a hallmark of, you know, we've spoken a lot about the Australian spirit, but there's the world spirit too, of the people coming to, I mean, people coming to assist. Yeah. When I was in Los Angeles recently, that was pretty much the first question that people asked me, especially when they heard my accent. That was from friends to strangers in shops, you know. Oh, oh really? Yeah. And it was amazing. Oh, yeah. even the fire, is he okay? Is everyone okay? Do you know people that have been affected? And it was like, yeah, I think everybody does. Um, and then I would just deliver that Australian catchphrase, you know, we're open for business. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. And, uh, and we're doing okay. We need your help. We're grateful for the help. And that was right after those um, 
the American firefighters had perished in there, oh. that aeroplane. Which, yeah, just, oh my goodness. And yet you talk about the kids and and how do we move forward? And I think too, action is the way to do it. That's if you ever feel helpless, go help someone who is in need. You yeah. Know, if you want to feel better about yourself, go help someone. And I think there's going to be ways where there might be folks out there who haven't been able to donate money. They haven't been able to do certain things over the last few months, but there'll be opportunities down the track. Yeah. Especially in the coming, you know, the next 12 months and beyond. And beyond, absolutely. You know, that's I mean, you think I mean. about some of the wineries that burnt down in uh, South Australia, you know, that's going to be four, five, six years before they're able to be making their wines again. So it's finding ways to support those businesses. Let's drink more wine. Uh, let's no do it. That. <laughs> that's a great outcome. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it's a great opportunity to to... to assist and there are places um we'll, we'll list this we'll put them up on yeah. facebook but there's yeah. obviously on instagram there's some great places you can go at spend with them at empty esky at buy from the bush there's at stay in the bush doing a fabulous job of drumming up business in fire affected areas and like i said we'll put them up on our on our yeah. facebook page so you've got them we did it we went down down yeah. the south coast um which you know, we didn't like, have an esky, but we bought stuff yeah, anyway. We, bought, yeah. <laughs> we were there. We, we did our stuff. road trip. Yeah, and I tell you, it was great for our marriage. Pause. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> I had to, for my aspect, to, it was to cast. We had a been gr- away. we had a great weekend. Look, and I was going to say, no, you're right. Yeah, I just had to. Th- <laughs> I know you did. We, had, like, we, what you the kind hell? of changed you direction for I did. a little I bit. I was, was going to say, yeah, I was like, I was with the fires, and then you went. It helped our marriage. I was like, wait, what? It did. It was a great weekend. Yes, so it was we, a wedding. Cover- yeah, it yeah. Was, we went not for our wedding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was, um, but I'm covering two parts there. You know, this is an opportunity. We're talking about relationships. We're talking about separate bathrooms and other tools to keep your relationship together. One of them, go away. Go away for a trip. Yeah, go Leave to the, the south coast. Yes, it's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Or in, any, into the bush, wherever. Yeah, you know, go, go have to a those weekend communities. Away. Yeah. You know, shake the rug and let the you mean like, your hair? fall out. Yeah, take the rug. Yeah. <laughs> My merkin. <laughs> no. No. Oh, why do you have to uh, go Why not? Fine. Um, so, uh, but yeah, shake the rug out and, um, go and have a holiday. And this is one way to one, take care of your mental health yeah. by getting closer with your partner um, and help others at the same yeah, time. What's better than that? Nothing like sitting in the car for a few hours, listening to some tunes and having a chat or yep. not. <laughs> Going buying some local product produce from the, you know, the businesses down there. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Done done it's good it was good and it doesn't take long it's even for a night just for a night yeah. go down for a saturday night or yeah. take off on a friday arvo and come back on sunday yeah um you know it's a great thing to do and that's something that um you know i've for 2020 <laughs> that's something that i really want to do more of right for sure is the road tripping because we did have such a great time and yeah. then you know as you as we've been saying helps other people helps us so it's a win-win yeah what i what i thought was fun about our trip too we've got a our car is not doesn't it's not fitted out with bluetooth so it's not connected to our cell phone but we took a bluetooth speaker and stuck it on the back seat so we're able to listen to podcasts listen to songs playlists and things like that we weren't hamstrung by old cds and fm radio that goes out after two hours on the road yeah. It was good. It was good. Your face just before. It was good for our relationship. Like, what? <laughs> I had to really okay. think about it. I'll speak for myself. <laughs> yeah. No, it. I'm glad you brought me back to that point that it was yeah. true. So, speaking of 2020, mm. here we are in 2020 um, with a crazy start to the year. But you, you've always been a... Um, a New Year's resolution, dude. As long as I've known you, you've made lists of things, plans, and mm. 2020, and yeah. you know everything that it, all that entails. So, did you have New Year's resolution for this year? And if so, what were they? Um, I didn't. Oh, 
Uh, okay, I scratch that. No, well, don't scratch it because <laughs> because I mean I talked about this you on didn't? the radio. No, I didn't. I really, didn't. I talked about it on my my radio show. Um, uh, I didn't this year, mm. and a, maybe it was part of the just the apathy of feeling like you know we were pretty smoke oppressed, and I just didn't didn't feel like doing a, a one because I felt like I was setting myself up. Yeah, and um, I I just want to take things as they come I suppose that was the resolution to do the best I can with whatever is in front of me um, make the most of every opportunity that comes my way and uh, and you know, it was a great line last year that I can't remember who said it. it wasn't you or me but we might have parroted it on this podcast you don't learn much when you're talking mm. and that is true, and we do a lot of t- – we, well, this is our talking time, really. So, Well, it would be a pretty boring podcast if neither of us spoke. Exactly. Yeah. So I tend to – I learn more when I'm listening, and so that's – I guess that's something that I want to uh, want to do mm. is just hone my skills as a listener. The other thing that I'd like to do, which I did do at the end of the year, is do my um, 108 things that I'm grateful for, for the past year. And that is a, it's never too late to do it, actually. It really, for me, put the year, put a button on the year, and it made me go through all the things that I experienced in the year. And it also helped me to even kind of, put in a place things that weren't so good, but what I got from the lesson, Mm -hmm. you know, what I learned from a a particular thing that happened. And if I'd acted or behaved negatively or had a reaction to it, you know, I was like, well, actually what came out of it? Um, One of those things was the recent trip that I did to the States, which was packing up our storage space. So we've had a, we, we moved back here three years ago. And we've had a storage space sitting there in Los Angeles with things that we were going to go back to. And it was, you know, five days of me back and forthing from that space, uh, giving up stuff, sharing things and figuring out what I'm going to bring home. And um, there were some moments there where going through old paperwork and stuff where I thought, oh, he really effed that up or that was a shame that that didn't happen. Um, <laughs> you know, there was one which was being in the movie Troy. Yeah, <laughs> there was my there was my contract for Troy, and uh, you know, second centurion to the left. Whatever <laughs> it was, a bit more than that. But um, I never got to do that part because I was involved in the television series at the time, and they wouldn't release me from my contract. I mean, and- that was really your Academy Award winning role, it was. right there, wasn't it? Right there, in such a, an amazing movie, it got so much. Yeah, it was <laughs> right. Kudos would have been there. Yeah. It was right in between Eric Banner, <laughs> his left bicep, and Brad Pitt's yeah over his chest shoulder plate. But as we were saying, as so we there were was saying, a reason I didn't get it. Yeah, you know? but I was like, was, oh, I can put that to bed now. But it would have been a, as we were saying, it would have been a great photo to have had you in your, in your Roman outfit, you know, with your coffee in hand next to Brad Pitt. That would have been one for the wall. But... Absolutely. I would have posted it, but anyway, it didn't happen. I so bet it... you would have posted it. Oh, for sure. I would have posted Well, I don't think Instagram was around at no, that point. No, 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 but it would have come out of the archives at some Damn point. Damn straight. Damn anyway. Straight. Anyway, but to let go of stuff, that's mm. my point. Um, and as, as I said, it's never too late to do it. It's a, I, I find it very cathartic. Uh, and you end up you know, writing down, oh, the sea, grateful for the sea and the, mm. the wind and the rain. Grateful for firefighters. Grateful for... Mm, yeah. Very grateful for firefighters. Yeah, you know, all yeah. those things. And it's like, oh, yeah. And you're just sending that thought of gratitude to whatever it is you've been grateful for mm. is a great way to do it. So um, long answer to your question. What about you, honey? How do you feel about... How do you feel about resolutions and did you make them? I, I stopped making resolutions some time ago. Why? Um, because I feel like it's a setup for me personally, and um, it's a setup f- for failure. And I think that was mostly because I uh, my resolutions were far too, perhaps they were too big or they were too lofty or. I was thinking the word lofty. Yeah, you know, and I just I 
I just go, you know what, you can make a resolution in the morning. And about any the morning day? about or, the day. Or about the next five minutes. I, why not yeah, the next five that. minutes? Yeah, kick, kick yeah. That finish ass. this podcast. Hey, I achieved that. Yeah. yeah, for me, I need to build on small achievements. That's what works for me personally. Um, keep one small promise to myself a day. Right now, it's when I wake up, the first thing I do is go outside and put my feet, bare feet on the grass. Why? Because I find it's grounding and I don't, I want to make sure the first thing I do is not reach for my phone. I, that is that is a promise that I want to make to myself. Get my feet on the earth and then I smell, I smell the frangipani. <laughs> no, oh, I was, was going to say, you smell? No, you don't smell that bad. I probably do from the hot flushes throughout the night. <laughs> that might be a guarantee. Um, yeah, put my feet on the earth, smell a frangipani. And that's what I'm going to, that's what I'm doing every morning right now, just to sort of give myself that moment before I head into technologyville. And the other thing I was talking to a mum about this the other day, um, and this isn't a news resolution, but it is a resolution that I'm making damn sure I'm going to do is that to lift, I think I spoke to you about this the other day, is that if anyone is walking out of my house and saying goodbye, that I lift my eyes from my phone and look at them and give them a kiss, give them a hug, wave them goodbye. Because as we know, life can do crazy stuff. That may be the last time I see that person. Mm. And if the last time I see that person is, I'm not seeing them, I'm looking at my phone. How tragic is that? So I make sure when someone says goodbye to me, my eyes, if I'm on my phone, Mm. I bring my eyes up and I look at them. That is a promise that I am making to myself because I caught myself doing that with, I think it was our son. And he got in his car and by the time he got, got into his car, I thought, oh my God, I did not raise my eyes up from my phone. That is atrocious. That's atrocious. So that's it. That was, that was it for me. I was like, nah, no more. Never doing that again. You and I, over the years, so we've been together for 20, this is our 28th year married, probably our 30th year together since we've known each other. 90, oh, what did we meet? 1990. We met. Yeah, I met you when I was 20 yeah, and yeah. I'm 50 now. Look, you're looking good, honey. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, we came from different backgrounds. You know, my mum and dad uh, are still married. Your mum and dad are not. Um, my mum and dad, well, our household was a bit more formal. Like you would often talk about, geez, you've got to know the manners of the Dado household. Something that, that, that I'm with you on this, by the way, with the phone thing, that, that something that we were taught as kids, which we don't do a lot of, um, but my mum and dad still do this. When, when someone's leaving their house, they get up and they walk to the front door. They don't let someone walk out. And, and I'm going to say, probably if I think back to it, when, 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 they were, when it was just us in the, in the house, dad didn't walk me to the door every time I left. Yeah. I left uh, the house. So this is probably a moot point, really, because I was thinking, I'm going to do that with the kids. I'm going to walk them to the door each time they leave. <laughs> I mean, it's a bit They'll be like, what, Dad? What? Well, yeah, what? What? what do you want? <laughs> weird, dude. <laughs> weird, Dad. Kiss, so, giving him a kiss and, yeah, that, looking at, look, you know, clocking them, I think that is really important. Are you finding, are you finding that your phone is becoming more hypnotic? Um, I don't think it's becoming more, sometimes it's actually becoming less. I'm finding myself more irritated with it um, than anything. I've, I'm feeling because like there's a pendulum starting to swing the other way now, actually. I'm, I'm a lot more irritated when other people are on their phone. <clears throat> Just saying. Could be you that I'm staring <laughs> You got, I, I got, I got, I got that. so I, I, mad with you the other day. Did you? You didn't say anything. Oh, yes, I did. Oh, we, I had a, we had a, we had an argument memory. at Westfield um, shopping center. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
about you playing words with friends while we were sitting there, the three of us on Bert Bodie's birthday. And you were like, what? We're just waiting for food. It was like, Cameron, Dada. Yeah, I'm not going to defend that moment. It was a mistake. And I've done the same thing. I've done the same thing. And that's yeah. why I'm just, yeah, so I'm getting irritated with it. Yeah, and we, we did cover off on technology last year, phones, screens. Mm. How it does impact a relationship. Yeah, and uh, and I think we could probably do more on yep. it as we learn more about <laughs> how we're behaving yep. in our relationship. That was one thing I was going to say to you about, oh, this, is, this is another thing I mentioned before that I went to the States. I went by myself and because um, it was pretty rotten job to do anyway yeah. uh, to, to go back and empty stuff out. And Ali stayed here with the kids and like I said, I was only gone for four or five days. Um, I found it really important to go away by myself for a little while just to kind of, again, shake the, shake the rug out and, and look at the ways that I've been responding or reacting to mm-hmm. you, to the kids, to my work, to how I deal with people. And, and I guess, you know, we talked about New Year's resolutions. I didn't make any, but make some intentions for myself, mm. some private ones. And I, and I did, when I came back, I, I felt a lot better. I felt a lot more grounded. I felt just, just creating that separation from myself, from you, um, was a was a good thing to do, and you know I think that's an important thing to do in a in a relationship. Absolutely, which a lot of people don't know, and we haven't. We lived in each other's pockets for a long time, and I, and I didn't think that that was something I could do, particularly as a mum. It's like, how on earth do I carve out time for myself? Because you always were going away, you know, for oh, work. work, yeah. And so, how on earth do I carve out time? and have time for myself when I've got children. Like it just was, that was impossible for me. Mm. I just couldn't, that was like, I can't figure this out at all. And it's only, well, I'm still not good at it actually, but I, but I feel the craving a lot more. The older I get, the more I want time uh, alone. Yeah, It's really important. It refreshes me for yeah. sure. I, I would argue, and I wouldn't argue, but but I think you know the times that I've been away for work, and you'll say, "Oh, he goes away." For, you know, Cam's gets you get this time away from for work. Work is work. That's not time. I don't think anyway. If I'm concentrating on my work, I'm not thinking about how I'm responding, how I'm behaving in my life. I'm thinking about the job that I do. It's taking that moment away from from your work, from the normality of your life being you know, being a parent or, you know, you, you're never not a parent. You're never not, a, I mean, you're never not married. Um, but you get to that moment to look at how you're behaving within each of those paradigms. And um, I think that's, that's, a, that's a point of difference, you know, as opposed to, yeah, well, you always go off and work and say, yeah, but I'm actively thinking about what I have to do to get my job done. I'm not thinking about how I'm behaving in my life and what I can do to make it different and giving myself space to, 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 get to just solely think about yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was almost going to argue with that, but that's okay. I, 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 I see that. Point. I mean, there are times, you know, obviously, you know, if I've been away on location and I, and I go spend a day playing golf. Yeah. Cause that, you, you would Sunday, often have quite debt. You have days off and you have weekends. You, I, off I would and, do that weekends yeah. off, but often that time was spent with, with, a, with, with the guys and we'd be playing golf or we'd doing something. It wasn't those moments where you just going, you know what? I just actually need to take an afternoon where I go and sit by the ocean and or walk or do something and, and have a bit of reflection about what I'm doing. It's I'm not saying do it every weekend or something, but it's good to do it every, you know, every month or so mm. just to recalibrate yeah you know so look we are going to cover off on a number of topics over the next weeks i'm excited about it or yes. next episodes yeah we've time. got some great topics coming up that we've been looking at and list uh you know researching into some amazing relationship experts like real experts <laughs> <laughs> Not us. Uh, <laughs> like, for real. Yeah, like, com- actual, yeah. like, they've got, like, letters after their name. 
Not that you always need letters, but, you know, yeah, that's, serious, that's, 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 serious that's, people. It's yeah, a setup, right? And, yeah. Um, yeah, we've got some great information to share yeah. from them. So we're excited about that. I guess you just think of us as your conduit to those people. We'll, we'll, we'll spend some time researching and, and see how it applies in our, in our marriage, our relationship, and, and pass on those thoughts. And we'll give you always give you the... Uh, give you those experts to check out for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So we talked earlier about the different places that you can assist with the bushfires, uh, assist with people who have been affected. Um, We'll post those up on our separate bathrooms, Facebook page and uh, we'll keep going. Yeah. Go grab your esky, go visit those places, go grab your partner, grab your partner, (laughs) grab your partner, go for a weekend away and spend some time down there and, Um, we will catch you on the next podcast of separate bathrooms. I was going to say, or, you know, if you don't, if you, that's, that's the moment too. If you don't want to, if you want to go away by yourself and go and assist somebody, you know, if your partner. Well, maybe that's what the relationship needs. Go on your own. That's exactly right. Yep. Whatever, whatever it takes. I'm packing my bags. (laughs) I'll see you next week. (laughs) 